is um, VA202303. Matt? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this one is a resigning request by Anthony Tong for a property that consists of about a third of an acre located at 307 East James Street to rezone from its current residential professional RP to office professional OP. Um, as is talked about in the staff uh, packet, um, his proposed use is to relocate his existing tattoo parlor on North Patrick <coughs> Street to this address. Um, it requires either commercial zoning, um, which doesn't work very well in the character area here, or office professional zoning with the conditional use, which means if the rezoning is approved to OP, he would then come back in a future month um, to request a conditional use approval in OP zoning. I mean, as you see, it's located at 307 East Jane. Um, most of the area around there, up and down Jane Street, is in RP. There is commercial zoning down at the corner of Ashley Street, uh, which is about 500 feet or a little bit more to the east. Uh, it is a transitional neighborhood character area, uh, which puts some limitations on some of the zoning that can be requested. Um, generally, you see transitional neighborhoods, um, character area that is between residential and commercial, or an area that has a mixed pattern, a residential and some other things. Sometimes it's an intrusion of other uses. Um, sometimes it's an area that needs to go ahead and transition. Uh, both types of scenarios work in that character area, depending on the particular neighborhood. In this case, the area, you see the uh, imagery, uh, urban canopy. Most of these buildings are residential. Some have been converted to offices. Um, some have been completely rebuilt. Subject property is one of those office-type buildings, uh, but built as an office, I believe, occupied by the Humane Society as their administrative office for many, many years. Um, it has served as campaign quarters more recently, um, done a variety of things. It's also been sitting empty for a while, which is why you see pine needles on, on much of the site. This is the view from the street looking up the driveway. Um, there's a parking area in the front that's under those pine needles. The drive in the back is close to view of the front, and then the backyard is also painted with a dozen or more parking spaces there under pine needles, and then the back side of the building. Um, the adjacent properties, this is the view down Jane. Um, this is that Boulevard Street that goes from Ashley back toward the stadium. Um, on Friday nights, you'll see a whole lot more cars than this here, uh, parked in the median, um, but you see a good view of the street itself. Um, next door is a law office building um, built from a, I think, a former house or built to look that way. Um, that's probably the newest thing that has occurred on that street. And then across the street from there, we get into residential use. I think this is a rental house. Property on the corner of Jane and Iola, northwest corner, that's an actual rental duplex. And the opposite corner to the northeast. <coughs> My battery's getting a little weak here. There we go. Um, that's in the rental house on the corner. Um, and then going further east down Jane Court, actually, another the residence. The property on the south side of the street next to the separate <coughs> property to the east is a duplex. Next to that is an office building. And then the large brick house on the corner of Jane and Ashley that um, you might recognize. You see it from the side. And the, uh, it is existing site plan showing the footprint of the building with the parking area. And with all of that, staff has concerns about upping the RP zoning to OP on one spot on the street in an area that leans more toward the residential side and it does the professional office side. Um, so, with that, we are opposed to the OP zoning located here. So, we're finding it inconsistent with the conference plan. And the Santa Fe exercise is in the power. More details of that are there in the packet. And we're recommending denial of the zoning change. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for staff? All of them. Matt, I'm just, I'm just curious why we find this inconsistent when we can have it just to care for personal services and for a drug rehab center. And I, I'm just curious why those would fit the, 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 the character of this, but would, would, would it be more fitting to maybe put time periods on this? And, and I'm just curious. Well, through conditional use, you can do that. Um, you know, like limited hours of 
operation and control the site plan and the size of the use, that kind of thing. But yeah, OP allows a few things that are more intensive than RP. Um, you may recall some of the cases we've had in the past couple of years where we've gone from RP to OP. Um, some of those have been on Venus Road. Some of those were also for personal service shop purposes. Even if we one of the that they have a, a, a phone condition needs that came out. The difference is Venus Road is a five lane highway with a lot of traffic. East James Street is not it's very much a residential street. Um, zoned RP solidly for many years. The pattern is RP, but more on the residential scale for things, not more on the office or commercial scale. If it were existing more heavy office kind of thing, you know, like an office park, then maybe, you know, we look at it as a side street office park off of that corridor. But I see this more as a residential area where a few buildings, residential in character, have been converted to office, which is very typical of an RP. So I, I'm just curious, I'm just, I'm, so please don't take yeah. it wrong. So <clears throat> if a pediatrician want to buy that bill a day and set up practice mm -hmm. and see 47 patients a day, that would be acceptable? Yes. It but, would but, if they could get it to fit, yes. But that would be acceptable, but I don't know how, what, six customers that they had a tattoo parlor to fit. I'm, I, I don't understand that. Right. <clears throat> Remember, this is a rezoning case, not a conditional use case. So things like a bank, financial institutions, um, larger personal care homes, nursing homes, things like that that are allowed on there. And you can't make the OP zone because only for him when he leaves, it would go away and revert back to our There's no automatic revert. There have to be a public hearing to change it back. And this is a, a different issue also, but applicant is already existing in a commercial area. Do you all have that question for staff or just one yourself? Just sorry. Uh, so my understanding is in RP, it's not allowed with a, an exception, no how, no what. Not this level of personal care or personal service shop. Right. But in an OP with a conditional use, it is. Correct. But if we were to rezone this to OP and the tattoo parlor moved out, then that's opened us up to a higher level. Right. Um, just that spot zoning for that OP right there. So a nursing home could go in there. Um, that's what I'm saying. A restaurant. Well, a bank. A bank, not, not yes. A restaurant, but yeah. A bank, right. It's, and there's not a whole lot of difference between RP and OP. Um, if the character of the street were different, I would think differently. If this were the lot right behind that CH property on the corner, right. and you're a lot closer to Ashley, then you could kind of view it as a transition. <coughs> you know, see commercial OP, RP, that kind of scenario would work, but this is right in the middle. Matt, how long is the list of what can go in OP as opposed to RP? Is it a foot long or three or four things? It's just a few things. What, what are they, if you don't mind? Well, like a bank. Um, nursing home, the higher ends of um, personal service shops, also um, um, daycare centers, commercial size daycare can go in OP but not an RP. They need like that. So do you and think any of those things would really uh, compromise the integrity of that area? Or? Oh, well, it could. It could. And then also it opens up, you know, for the properties next door if they want to go. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. that. That's a consideration. We did that. We did that one too. Uh, okay. Thank you. Matt. Any other questions uh, for staff, commissioners? And then just a footnote for the commissioners too. The applicant in the pre app meeting, one of their options was to request CN zoning. That's the highest that's allowed in transitional neighborhood. But as you can see, that's an even greater difference from RP. And I'd recommend it that if you're going to try for the rezoning, try for the easier scenario of OP um, and see if that works. And then if so, then request the conditional use. It just needs two processes. And I told them in the beginning I was not in favor of OP in this location on this property. But if you're going to try it, at least put your best foot forward. Yeah. Thank you very much.
Any other questions? Good. Okay, that will now open the public hearing portion of this case. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Tom. Pleasure to be up here today. I don't take too much of your time. I just want to hit on a few points. Now, I'm the owner and founder of Urban Body Art. Um, after I graduated from Ohio State University around 2015, I was working in a tattoo shop here for about five years doing the management for the different locations that they had. I was making jewelry as a hobby part time. So when I went into business for myself, I created a hybrid business that was selling jewelry and ta doing tattoo services. So a lot of the people from the other shop came over with me and we created the, the first location on Ashley right there in the Plaza next to Zachary's. So we've been doing exceptionally well and now I have a desire to split those two entities into strictly jewelry and then strictly the tattoo service side of the business. So it took us a while for us to actually find something that was suitable, doctor office, dentist office like in structure, private rooms, private studios, hardwood floorings. And when I found this property, it was ideal for what we was looking for. And then being walking distance around the corner, I can micromanage both of my businesses and just you know be right there um, around the corner. So we've been in the lease since about November. We started painting. There was no need to do anything to the building. It fit all of our specifications outside of color and hanging pictures. It wasn't until I went to get my business license that I found that it was not zoned for my type of business. So after doing an investigation, I was wondering why I had to have this business zoned commercial when I had no retail products in the tattoo aspect. So my business, much like my neighbor who is the attorney who is welcoming of my uh, potential presence, you know, my business works a lot like his. They book appointments, you pay an hourly rate, um, there's no taxable item, so very much like a therapist or an attorney that operates in the same fashion. So uh, after speaking in my pre-application uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Martin, I did learn that um, it's not a municipal situation, but in the state of Georgia, my particular type of business is coded for commercial. Why, I don't know. So because of that, you know, because I wanted to keep this location, I ended up having the initial meeting with Mr. Martin and where I found these things. So, um, I understand why we can't go to commercial, it makes plenty of sense, but I want to kind of hit on this topic about, um, you know, changing the actual makeup of, of the street. So on my side of the street where I would be at, there is one residential property out of the six. The other ones are office spaces and uh, a commercial. So you have a commercial on the end, and you have a non-profit act of, then you have an attorney's office, and the one directly to the right is the actual residential. Now on the other side of the street, going back towards I.O., there is more residential, but my side of the road, not too much residential. Now I think there was, one of the issues was kind of wanting it to stay uh, as residential and look and feel as possible, and um, I mean, respectfully, closing off food traffic for Friday Night Lights is nowhere close to being, in my mind, where I want my residence to be. So. I feel like this is a kind of unique situation in the placement of where the building is, the actual street, how close it is to the football stadium, the fact that after 7 o'clock there is no through traffic because they don't just park on the medium, they park in the street too. So um, these are just things that I, I want to take into you know, uh, context as well, you know, as consideration. Uh, if there's any questions of anyone? Any questions? Anthony, uh, uh, thank you for coming forward. So I'm, I'm just curious, so this, this would, you, you said you separate the businesses so that you, you anticipate this being the tattoo section? Absolutely. So the Ashley Street location will still sell the jewelry, which is our taxable products. All of the appointment, private related tattoo appointments and those artists who are 1099 contractors, they will move to this new location. So I'm not looking at a lot of food traffic, as you said before, maybe one client per artist in a day, not more than what with, uh, with the attorney or actor would have. So not a lot of change to any aspect of the traffic as far as the building is concerned. We're not doing any type of improvement, changes building. Um, there's already a parking area in the backyard that uh, can suffice my, my customers. Um, so. So, so, so let, let, me, let me touch on that. So how many artists will be potentially working here and how many customers would you say they would have a day? Okay, so I have right now four artists and a piercer. Each one of those artists might see two clients a day. The piercer might see maybe 10. 
if that on the days that she's working, she's pre-nursing, she graduates this year from VSU, so she's in and out of clinical. And what kind of hours? Uh, so my hours right now generally are 11 to 8 from Tuesday through Saturday. We're closed on Sundays and Mondays, similar fashion to a barbershop. Um, with, once again, the area in which we're in, we do understand we'll probably have to tailor our Friday night hours and not take appointments past 5 o'clock to anticipate the uh, lack of ability for flow traffic to go through the area. So. Some of the projects. <coughs> Any other questions for Mr. Tom? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here this evening who would like to speak in favor of this case? If so, please come forward. State your name and address for the record. You have about two minutes. Well, so I think I can do two minutes. Um, <laughs> from your but, point of view, yeah. uh, <laughs> But my name is Rob McGinn with Sandy Mac Properties. Uh, I'm the manager of the company that owns the property. And Tony Tong came to me and he was looking for a place to rent. He showed him a couple places on Venus, but this particular um, facility fit his needs uh, pretty good. And I, I'm not going to look at any commissioners or any, any, any person back there, but, you know, taboo, uh, tattoos are not as taboo as they once were. Now we have teachers with tattoos, we have professionals, doctors, I go in, and tattoos are, you know, the norm now. And they are not exact, they're not, it's not a barker bar where, you know, people pull up and they get a 50 cent tattoo of, it says, a heart and mom. He has really great artists, and a lot of them travel the country, you know, and they take their items with them. And they, these are high dollar, you know, the clientele. So, I'm all for it. I own the property. If you have any questions for me, I'll be glad to answer. Any questions for this gentleman? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in opposition to this case? Anyone here this evening that would like to speak in opposition to this case? No one doing so. That will end the public hearing portion of this case. I'll go back to the commissioners for comments or a motion, whichever comes first. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll yes, make a motion. Uh, first, let me say you uh, Mr. Tom, our fantastic salesman. I changed my mind because of what you said. So to that end, I make a motion that we approve this request. I second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and it has been seconded. Molly, do you have those names? Yes. So, all in favor of the motion to approve it? Oh, sorry. I'd just like to add, uh, I'm in favor of this as well. And the reason is that uh, he's not going to change the building. He's not going to change the appearance. He's going to have very low traffic compared to other things that could be there. And I believe this was my dentist's office in the 1970s. My I believe so. So it was, uh, it's not been a residence for decades. It still has the lights where you turn on that the office is in use. So I, love. I just, I, when all of this is considered, I just don't see that there's a problem with this at, uh, this land use. So that's, I just wanted to make that comment. And just to confirm one more time, there's no way that we can approve his use without changing the zoning to OP. Correct. Yeah. All right, follow that. that so we have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Please raise your hand. Any opposed? Thank you so much. Okay, moving on. The next case is BA 202304. Matt, please tell us what you have. Thank you. 